we're here in the Amigo booth and we're talking to Baron Keller and Baron is going to show us a handful of new games that Amigo has out this year. Now they have so many we can't possibly cover them all, but I think we've picked four here that look really fun. So Baron, why don't you just pick one at random and go for it. Okay, then uh, let me pick uh, The City at cool. random first. It's uh, the new game from uh, Tom Lehman, Excellent. known for Race for the Galaxy. It's uh, a card game. Uh, basically, it's uh, a game. Well, it's it's called the city for a reason because you you build your own city. Cool. Uh, you, every player gets uh, hand cards, chooses one card to uh, to lay out each turn. Okay. And, uh, when everybody uh, chose a card, it's it's uh, revealed simultaneously. Cool. Then you pay for the card. Basically, you build it. Then you get income, victory points, and then the next round starts. So it's it's a very easy thing. Cool. Um, the game has uh, lots of different cards. The the illustrations are made by Clemens Franz, the same guy who uh, did Agricola, for example. Gotcha. And, uh, a lot of other lookout games. <laughs> um, and it's it's uh, kind of similar to San Juan. Okay. It's Tom Lehman, after all. Uh, it's very fun to play. It, it, it looks exciting. It's been something that's had some buzz around it for the last few yep, months, so yep, we're excited yep. to see it finally come out. It's pretty uncommon for us to, to get buzz from, from uh, hardcore gamers, because we, we are usually known for family-type games. Right. But it's a nice change. Would, would, you like say, that. would you say that this game will appeal to both the hardcore gamer and the family gamer? Definitely, then? definitely. Good deal. Definitely. It's it's basically how you how you would want to play it. So okay, as the rules are very easy, but it, it's all it all depends on what you make out of it. Right. So, but how long of a game is it um, to play? I'd say uh, usually a, round, a game a total game consists of seven maybe eight rounds. Okay. So twenty minutes and then you're off for the next one. Oh wow, that's quick. Usually we when we have our board game evenings at home, mm -hmm. we order food. Play one or two rounds, quick games like the city, mm -hmm. and that's a perfect, perfect game for that. Excellent. Well, it looks fun. The artwork is really fun. I can see everybody building their little cities in front of them, yep. and I assume all the cards and their abilities feed off of each other based on where you play them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks really cool. You get some special features with uh, like the the spring fountain, the shopping cart, and the car, where you have uh, which you find all over other yeah. cards, and uh -huh. uh, you get certain bonuses to the more shopping carts you have in the game, the more victory points you get, and gotcha. stuff like that. Okay, well fantastic, that looks great. Uh, what else do we got here today? Uh, we have uh, the second edition of uh, Friese Matenten, uh -huh. another card game. Uh, the author is uh, Friedemann Friese. Excellent. Uh, this way. Is that a first and second version or an expansion? Uh, it's basically uh, the, 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 the first set is, okay. is what you need to play the second set as well. The second set adds extra cards to the mix. Gotcha. Uh, Friesen Martenten was first published back in the 80s, I think, from uh, Friedemann himself. Okay. It was uh, 240 cards then with a little collectible thing which you could buy extra cards, but it was way back. And, and, and it had a very little print run, and we decided to do it again. Cool. Set one um, was published last year, okay. And set two adds uh, a few more features, like uh, gotcha. you need those tokens for cards that have effects in more than one round. The, the basic of the game is that you have a it's a, a bidding game. Basically, okay. everybody has money. You don't have any hand cards, so that's pretty pretty special thing. Oh, okay. If you if you buy cards, it is they are laid out in front of you, nice. even if it's action cards oh, okay. that you haven't used them already. They still uh, stay face up in front Everybody of you until you see. use them. Uh -huh. uh, yes. And it's it's a series of of, of uh, auctions. You can you have different types of cards. For example, status symbols, which <laughs> pretty much only give you victory points. Cool. Uh, you have uh, action cards that give you um, straight action, like like destroy a factory of somebody else or do this and that one time, and then you discard them. Um, uh, I'm trying to just looking at the artwork. I, I don't know that I know the theme of this game. What's kind of the story? Like a business, like a 1940s. Mm, I don't know what. It's it's business. 
but not in a certain time frame, oh, okay. time period. It's more like a, a humorous advance or approach to to certain things. Like, okay. like when you have it's it's pretty much text on it, but uh, the artwork is cool. Like like that's a philosopher. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love the artwork. Yeah, modern artist, and, and you have the artist. Uh, the, the artwork itself is is uh, one of the reasons quite a few guys just buy the game, even oh, if wow. they don't have a clue <laughs> how it's about or they don't even speak German. Uh, but a little bit back to the game. Um, Everybody has a maximum of three factories, okay. which is a common concept for Friedemann, like in Funkenschlag, you got right. three factories. <laughs> so that's the red cards, which produce income every turn. And with the income, you can uh, bid on, on new cards. Gotcha. And, uh, you try to reach a certain amount of victory points, and as soon as you have them, you won. That, that's pretty much it. Excellent. Um, you have a mechanism that you have uh, a, a quite large amount of cards open for auction, which are which are subsequently done. And if you don't, if nobody wanted to bid on the card, it's it's, it's pushed a bit face up, and if uh, no um, bid up, and if um, even in the round after that nobody wanted to buy it, it's discarded. So it is gotcha. it isn't staying around if too long. Then you get the fourth card type, the blue ones. Um, they are uh, magic gathering wise enchantments. They, they stay around. They have gotcha. an, have an effect. Cool. Like like this one, your your maximum effect there is is increased by two. Stuff like that. Okay. So, and that's about it. Uh, it's okay. it's a fun game. You can play it. Um, with two players already. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of each game, uh, there is 15 cards chosen or cho uh, chosen randomly or or uh, not randomly per player. They are shuffled, and that's the deck for the cards. Ah, so okay. pretty much every match is different. Uh, when you have set one and two, uh, you can choose out of all those. Nice. And if it's successful enough, there will most likely be even a set three and maybe four. Excellent. Now, I noticed there is quite a bit of German text on here. Is this something yeah. that we think we'll ever see an English version of? I or? hope so. Um, from the first version, we, I think, have a Polish and a Finnish version. So, <laughs> if you find, well, if we find an English publisher, it will most likely Excellent. be available in England as well. I think on Board Game Giga already uh, fan translations of the cards, of since the cards. we have all cards numbered. Right. And worst case, you do stickers or proxies or whatever. Exactly. The game is great. Try it out. Okay, we definitely will. It looks yeah. fantastic. Let's do this one first. It's called Die Brücke am Rio Doro. Actually, a game that certainly has caught everybody's attention just by its visuals. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a game of adventure. Excellent. Because basically, if these guys would have given me more time to prepare, <laughs> I would have made the bridge. But... So, the theme of the game is that on one side of the river is the treasure, and on the other side of the river is the camp, the safe camp. So, okay. you as an adventurer, what are you going to do? You're going to cross the river to the treasure, take it and come back. Excellent. So, the problem is, the bridge is rotten. Uh -oh. So, you have uh, the planks on the bridge are two different... Uh, sides. Darker. One of them is uh, already Not look with good. a crack. They don't look good. No. <laughs> and the other one, the other side, uh, represents a okay bridge. Got gotcha. So, then we have uh, dice, we have the treasure. Excellent. And we have uh, base camp. Base camps over there. For the players. So then everybody gets a little reminder of the color and um, the, the amount of dice you can use because the more treasure you carry the more problems you have to to move smoothly or safely so the more you carry the fewer dice you have to choose from gotcha. so if you uh, if you're not carrying anything or carrying only one treasure uh, you have all three dice Gotcha. But the more you carry, the fewer you have. So if you want to carry all three possible treasures, you can only use one dice. So there are three different dice. There's the green one, that's gotcha. the safest one. Okay. Then the yellow one, one, which is a little bit risk involved, and the red and one is the fastest bad. but the most risky one. Gotcha. Who would have thought? <laughs> so 
if I want to move my my adventurer. Uh, illustration is, by the way, by uh, Michael Menzel. Okay, uh, excellent. The guy, love his work. Well known. Yes. By now, so everybody starts in in the camp on the safe side of the river, has to pass the bridge, and uh, it's the same we use for Atlantis. Gotcha. Just bigger. Um, everybody has to pass the bridge, get the treasure, uh, decide how many they would like to carry. Right. Because the carry uh, the, the treasure might e might either be uh, stolen by other players or dropped into the river. And uh, if if anything drops into the river, if any treasure drops there, they are lost forever. It's gone. So it's gone. So when he when I start the turn, I just roll the dice, and then I have different symbols on them. The foot symbol is pretty easy, straightforward, it's one step ahead. Excellent. The hammer uh, gives me the option to uh, repair uh, the plank right in front of me. Ah, so cool. if I am standing, I always play black, <laughs> if I am standing right in front of uh, a broken plank, I can, I can fix it before I, I oh, move nice. on it. And maybe even if the plank is totally lost, which is also possible, okay. I, can, I can repair the plank and then move on it. Gotcha. And it always repairs to its fullest size. Yeah, yeah, it's the easiest way to do. Cool. So then I have uh, the the hand symbol, which allows me to steal from other players. So ah. if the blue player is in front of me and he is carrying like two treasures, I can say, okay, why don't you give me one of those? <laughs> I can only steal if I if I uh, am not carrying the you maximum load at the moment. So. Exactly. Um, the third one is the Lightning danger bolt. symbol. Whenever I roll the danger symbol, I have to roll the danger dice. Gotcha. Danger dice has uh, on three sides nothing. Gotcha. So there's no too much danger. <laughs> then two sides with a broken plank. If I roll that, I uh, turn the plank to the broken side. And if it is already on the uh, on on the broken side, it is gone. So it is lost. And the last one is the you lose uh, one treasure into the river. You just let it fall. Ah. Um, so, so how many rounds? How many times do you try and cross the bridge? You, you have to, you have to cross quite a few times. So, so the bridge is getting getting uh, wrecked more and more over time, right? Because repairing is for whims. <laughs> uh, if I if I have if, if I want to go three steps and two of them are, are broken, I don't care. I just can go one, two, three as long as the the plank I, I arrive is that. okay. Gotcha. So the problem is now, if I arrive at that plank, there is already somebody else. I push him forward. So I would push him over there, and uh, the black one pushes push the, blue the blue one, one. over there. Gotcha. And imagine the same scenario without <laughs> that plank. I push I the like black it. one there, and the blue one like, ooh. If the blue one ends up in the river, all the treasure he had is in the river as well. He swims back to the safe side and starts again he in the camp. Gotcha, I love that. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, when I only have to choose, when I can only choose one dice, I can choose which one I use. I can Excellent. say, okay, I want to take the risk and take the red one or take the yellow one or the green one. It's totally up to me. If I end up with a uh, result which is totally crappy, would put me in the river in any way, I can just say, okay, I skip my turn even after I roll. Oh, wow. And next one, please. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Well, this looks So like I don't have to jump into the river. I mean, okay, that's if cool. somebody pushes me, it's not really my, yeah. my decision. Right. But, but I don't have to go there head first. Well, this certainly looks like a game that would appeal to families. Yes. Yeah. Kids seem like they would eat this up. Just the, the extra, you know, my Being able to see it. the 3D yeah, yeah. element yeah, of the yeah, bridge the and it falls apart. Yeah, and yeah. the kids probably love knocking dad into the yeah. water, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's why we, we illustrated the box inside that it looks like a river and outside. Um, so you basically play with all the components in the game, just the, just the box lid. You don't need it. Excellent. So, you can... Ooh, those are thick, aren't they? Yes. Wow. It's, it's four millimeters. Okay. Uh, quite some trouble with uh, Ludofac to get it in a way that, that uh, it works out because the purpose of the game is uh, it can be played with up to four players okay everybody has the same set of uh, squares okay um, they are different in size and um, the first player who, who gets every square on the base plate wins gotcha Straight in order to in order to uh, get the squares built you need three dice. That's okay. Random six-sided dice, um, standard six-sided dice. 
I rolled at the beginning of my turn, and then I used the points I rolled to choose which squares I built. So gotcha. for a roll two, I can use the two and build it somewhere. Then I can use another two, and I can choose a three to build that. Perfect. What I could also do is combine them. Ah, so you could do I a could seven or a six. Those twos are not twos, but four. I take a four. Perfect. Or combine all of them to use a seven, which is in some cases okay. <laughs> uh, or I could use two of uh, two special things. Ah. I can I can buy a, a bonus, which is basically a dice with one. Okay. So if I would have one and everybody has one at the beginning to make it a little bit more flexible, just pretend to have one more, which would also already ah, make see. that a six. Perfect. That way. Then your two would fit right in there beside yeah. it. Excellent. The problem is that my base plate is uh, four by five and it cannot be extended. So uh, I cannot build like this. Gotcha. And when I build something and I build the next level, I have to build the next level in a way that everything is covered beneath. Perfect. So I cannot build that way, but I have to build, build totally up. So gotcha. that, that's why we chose uh, the thick uh, cardboard to, yeah. to really make it look like you're building something. Because right. when you build five or six stories up, it should look like functioning in a way. The prototype was called, was called Bastion. It was like building fortresses and stuff. Uh -huh. uh, but marketing said fortresses don't sell that well. so. <laughs> Well, yeah, this will look pretty <laughs> impressive once you uh, yeah start getting those guys stacked up. That's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's and, and it's, it's just basically just the first one to fill the thing, even if you can fill it having not used all of this, as long as you keep it all a solid yeah. stack with everything under underneath, that's you, the only rule. You, that's you cool. don't have to use everything, but it makes it much easier because we have, uh, they don't really, the biggest one, the three <laughs> biggest one cannot really be stacked other than either you need help with a smaller one or you really have to use the whole room. Yeah, that big 12 looks like it might be just a little tough to get out on the board, yeah, yeah. period. Is, are there any special actions other that... Yes. Gotcha. Now we have the red token. The red token uh, is uh, called the stopper. Uh, I can either use one or two in a row. If okay. I use one, I can I can decide, like, I, I roll the 12 and you just build your first 12 and I'm totally happy. and. and I roll a 12, use my stopper and say, remove it. Ah. And if I have two stoppers and use them at the same time, I can not only say, you remove your 12, but I build one of mine oh, as well. Wow. So that, that's why you want to have the stoppers. Stoppers are called five, uh, they, they cost five points. Gotcha. Bonus points cost one point, but if you want to buy two in one round, it's it's already eleven points. Not to make it so you can spend the pips easy. on the dice not only to build but to buy special actions. Correct. Okay. Very uh, cool. The, the 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 tricky part is that you are never allowed to uh, cut the 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 dice result in half. So I can never do a five and one out Perfect. of a six. Perfect. I can only combine dice, but I can never never split the result. Okay, well, it that sounds, sounds very easy. It, it, uh, but the combination, the, the, the total, total amount of combinations you, you do with a, a roll of three, four, five, for example. Right. You can pretty much build everything you have. You just have to find a way that, that works best for you right. to, to get a, get a, get a most solid uh, structure. Cool. Well, that was quite a selection of games. Little card games, board games for kids, for adults, all kind of good stuff. Baird, we really appreciate you taking the time this morning to talk with us and show us these games. And we're excited to get some of these home and play them. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome.